Now we're going to look at the gate rotor assembly itself. Remember we have the gate rotor blade, we have the gate rotor support, which gives strength to the blades themselves. I'm going to remove this ring. And we have a washer underneath that. And we now can remove this blade. There will be some oil that will be holding it in place. As you can see here's the bushing. This bushing has to be pounded out with a punch and is also reinstalled with a um, with Loctite comes in the blade kit. Okay, this is the bushing that wears. The pin doesn't wear, but the bushing does wear. You can see the ridges on the end of the blade that I was talking about before. You can see those that indicate um, they're they're not touching at the center of the rotor. So there's good. This blade is in really good shape. There's and these blades are not a, they do wear, but they're not a re, typically a replaceable item because there's a lot of them that will last the life of the machine. You can go 120,000 hours. Some of them may be less. If, they're, if the blades are wearing quickly, there's probably other issues, probably liquid entering to the compressor. And that is one of the issues that you will find. The other thing that we can take a look at when we take this blade off, we can wipe the oil off and we can have a look at the back side. And I can see where there was movement on the gate rotor support, but there's no ridges or, or indentations. If you see indentations there, that is a sign that the compressor has been taking liquid. The liquid droplets are coming through it at such a high velocity and hitting this blade, it's causing the blade to compress. And that, that would be an indication of liquid. These are all the things that we would inspect if we had a failed compressor. It tells us the story of the compressor itself. And then we can put a new bushing in this if we want. But remember when we took the measurements, everything was good on this one. I'm going to put this back on. What I'll do then is I'll just take a little punch. Give a little tap around. It snaps right into the groove. That will hold the blade in place. Now on the top, we have the race for the bearing. That's the inner part of this bearing right here. This can be removed with a puller and you can pull this off and heat up the um, new race slightly and just drop it in place because it's it's um, it's a heat retention kind of like it's expanded and then drops in place cools and holds it in place now let's take a look at this bearing here move this aside so we can see this roller bearing in here we're going to want to remove the, the ring in here, retaining ring. Now that comes. And if you look at the ring, it has a bit of a bevel on the side. The flat part goes down. The bevel is at the top. So now to get this bearing out, it doesn't... Sometimes it'll come out like that. Yeah, that came out pretty easy. 
but sometimes what I have to do, I have to use this little puller that I have here. You just stick this under there and work it out. That's it to that bearing. You would only replace that if it's if it's outside of its tolerances or you're doing a bear, blade bearing kit complete. So we'll put this back in place. In we go. Now one of the things you want to be careful when we put this rotor back in, there is a, a kind of like a, it's like a plastic retainer in there. You have to be really careful that we put that to, together um, gently because if, if you break this plastic retainer then one of those balls will probably, rollers will fall out into the bottom and you won't be, be able to assemble it and you'll think what's wrong and then you take a look and you weren't gentle enough. <laughs> 